General John Burgoyne had an excellent plan to win the Revolutionary War. He arranged everything in England. The plan was approved by King George III in January 1777. Burgoyne would march his army south from Montreal, Canada, along the Hudson River. with the forces of British General Sir William Howe, who was in New York City, and those of Lieutenant Colonel Barry St. Ledger, who was in Fort Oswego. All three armies were to converge on Albany, New York. This move, along with a naval blockade, would cut out the heart of the rebellion, the northern colonies, and isolate these colonies from the rest of America. And if that happened, General George Washington would likely have to give up the fight for American independence. that did exist in upstate New York were hardly more than trails. British General John Burgoyne had an excellent plan. The march was to made the even more difficult because the Americans fell he trains across the path and broke down the plan was to create King George and destroyed bridges in all in an effort to slow the progress of the British Army. Hudson River. They can slam me down, they can't stop me. The plan that had looked so good in the King's Palace back in January did not look so good by August in the vast wooded wilderness of upstate New York. American General Benedict Arnold was able to trick St. Ledger's forces into turning back to Fort Oswego at Fort Stanley. Sir William Howe who was in New York Meanwhile, City, General Howe and saw an opportunity to Colonel capture Barry Philadelphia, Ledger, Pennsylvania. Who was in Philadelphia was the American capital where Congress met. Howe, after getting a from the British, British government, government, marched his army south, leaving only a small force this to move New York along City. with the naval blockade would cut out the heart of not the rebellion. Yet, the North he was all on his own and isolate these colonies from the rest of America. Burgoyne did realize that his army and needed a lot more horses. One General of his German units, the Brunswick Dragoons, had no horses at all. Independence. These 200 trained horsemen were intended to ride. They had therefore been issued the sort of equipment that cavalry would normally get, including divers and airlines, and a mix and roots of the way 8,000 pounds of these things. was a raid on the town of Benton, where the rest of his army was his scouts informed him that there was a large supply of supplies collected there. 
He ordered Oberst Leutnant Fritz Eberhard Cannon, who spoke no English, no. depart with 800 men, mostly handsome. His orders were to There were hundreds of wagons and tents and pushcarts and horses, 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 horses,
And that's responding to the call running away with Seth Morning, as expected. With his New Hampshire militia mm -hmm. units send known the message as to the Green Boyne. Mountain Boys. That reinforcements were needed as soon as possible. Reinforcements. Ethan In Allen had to been the leader of the boys for and reinforcement would be again. Burgoyne sent oh, yeah. Oberstleutnant Allen at this time was a prisoner of the British. With about 650 Hessians, Seth Warner, Bryson's force consisted of 330 Brunswick Grenadiers out and 280 light dismounted Brunswick The Hesse Hanau, a 50 German rifleman, brought two cannons known as Jaegers. Fired six he had nearly 40 Brunswick and 30 men to, to operate them. About 100 Indians. 50 British light infantry Fire marksmen, 400 Fire loyalist Fire militia, and strengthening the Americans to attack with 13 the Hessians retreated to a hill and dug in. Baum received some welcome, but unexpected reinforcements when a small party of loyalists arrived. Colonel Stark sent orders for all of the scattered American forces to assemble at Bennington. West when Baum saw Stark's men disappearing into the trees, he assumed the Indians they were withdrawing. The Americans approached Baum's four flanks, soon encountered a small detachment of Americans Stark used a guarding trick some to stockpiles of food lines. in a mill. He knew that the loyalist militia Baum's adorned their hats with white pieces of paper drove off the so they could tell themselves apart the from their identically dressed enemy. So Stark had his men do the same thing. This little deception allowed the Americans to get right into the Hessen lines. Baum sent word to Burgoyne about this action and told the British commander that there was supposed to be a small the enemy force in Bennington, which was the but these were expected to flee with white the approach of, of the Hessians from their hats and start shooting. Baum quickly realized that he was facing a much larger force than he expected. And that force was not running away as expected. The Tories bound to send the message to Canadians that them reinforcements were all around them as soon as possible retreated when they realized they were surrounded. But the Brunswick Dragoons in response held off to the Americans plea for about for reinforcements, were going then send they were out on a mission with about 650 Hessians. Ryman's force consisted of 330 Brunswick Grenadiers and 280 light infantry. At about 5 p.m., the Hesse Hanau artillery the dragoons brought two cannons by that their fire, six attempted balls, to cut their way and 30 men out with supports. But soon, expecting the Americans to attack, was killed. The Hessians retreated to a hill and dug in. Baum received some welcome with the dead of their commander reinforcements when a desperate Hessian finally surrendered. At about the same time, if we the long-awaited reinforcements arrived. Molly Stark Heavy rain widow. had delayed ah! Ryman and his 650 men. When Baum saw Stark's men disappearing into the trees, he assumed they were, late they were withdrawn to save Baum's detachment. Yet the Hessian's reinforcements came at an opportune moment. approached both flanks of the Hessian line. The Americans were looting the supply Stark used a clever trick to infiltrate Baum's line. And chasing the he knew that the loyalist militia adorned their hats with white pieces of paper so they could tell themselves apart from their identically dressed enemies. So Stark had his men do the same thing. The Hessians charged 
and we're beginning to this drive. This is organized the Americans to get right into the Hessian line. The dragoons, taken led by their commander, attempted to cut their way out with swords. But soon, the battle of Pennington, which was fought on August 16, 1777, turned out to be a critical blow to Burgoyne's plans. It reduced the size of the British army with by the death of their commander. Men. The desperate Hessians it the finally surrendered. Burgoyne's total defeat two months later in the turning point battle of the Revolutionary War, Saratoga. At about the same time, the long-awaited reinforcements arrived. Heavy rain had delayed Ryman and his 650 men. They were too late to save Baum's detachment. Yet the Hessen's reinforcements came at an opportune moment. The Americans were looting the supply wagons, corralling prisoners and chasing the fugitives of Baum's command.